Good morning. I am happy to officially call to order today's uh, public hearing of the Education Committee. Thank Thank you again. Um, anyone else who was here whose name has not been called out who was ready to testify in House Bill 7200? If not, we'll move along to Senate Bill 949, the Act creating an advisory council relating to digital citizenship, internet safety, and media literacy. Is Marcus Stallworth still here? Your hours of patience have been rewarded. <laughs> little evening humor, little evening humor. So, uh, so good morning, educate, evening, education committee. Yes, yes. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to be here. So, um, I'm having a Pavlovian experience with Bell, so I'm going to try to be very quick so we can meet that today. Um, my situation is really kind of short. I'm here in support of uh, Raise Bill 949 that speaks directly to putting together an advisory committee or council with regards to digi excuse me, digital citizenship, media literacy, and internet safety. So I know independently, you guys might be very familiar with some of those terms. There's been a lot of conversation about um, cyberbullying, you know, human trafficking, things of this nature. But uh, we are in a position where uh, our youth are in a space that probably none of us were ever in. So about 15 years ago, you know, these major devices, social media outlets, things of that nature were not existent. And in some of our travels, myself, um, as a licensed master's level social worker, as an adjunct professor in multiple universities throughout the state and through my national travels as a trainer with the Child Welfare League of America, this is not something that's just indigenous to Connecticut. So we were at the table last year and we worked very closely with Senator Giratana who helped us uh, get a bill passed 962, which got consolidated with a larger bill which in part mandated, mandated some type of social media education in the schools, which was fantastic. What we learned was it was very, very broad, it was very open, it was very vague. So there's incredible work that's happening, you know, in school, outside of school, et cetera, et cetera. My guys are not the only experts in the state that are doing this work, but it just kind of seems fragmented. And even in some of the quick, uh, some of the research that we've done, the, the new research is telling us that on average, parents are spending less than one hour a week of purposeful time with their children. So if the children aren't spending it with the parents, who has our children's ear? Nine times out of 10, our kids have a cell phone that they carry with them, that they go to sleep with, they wake up at an alarm, they bring it in the bathroom, they bring it to the dinner table. So with that level of access, it just gives them a level of um, maturity that otherwise we might not present in a certain way. So we recognize some of the benefits. Um, we see some of the um, aggressive characteristics that can be very, very uh, similar to people who are experienced withdrawal system, with, excuse me, withdrawal symptoms from uh, drugs and narcotics. And we just wanna put together an effort that we can get experts throughout the community who have some background that's not putting it just on educators so it looks like another extra job that they have to do and maybe we could do some of that heavy lifting give some advice back to to the education committee and see what they what they decide that makes the best sense so thank you very much and i'm more than happy to answer any questions you might have thank you for that very uh, thoughtful well-explained testimony thank you are there questions from members of the committee uh representative mccarthy vehi Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you for staying here with us and hanging in today. Um, just wondering, as we heard testimony earlier about student data privacy, which isn't exactly the same thing, but is related, if there's ever been any conversation about perhaps integrating the two, because in a sense, the data privacy is in a way about educating educators and administrators, and this piece, which I think is really critical and I'm thrilled to have it before us is sure. with students and in a, in a way to combine that. I, has, have you had any conversation with anyone about that? That's a really good question, thank you. So we haven't had any specific conversation with regards to that. Perhaps if, we, if a council is put together, maybe that's some of the dialogue that would be exchanged. A lot of our work that we do with 
young folks is kind of predicated on the notion of be mindful what you post online. So we spend a lot of conversation about your digital footprint, what that looks like, because we're noticing that it has a direct impact on what colleges look look for in terms of acceptance. Creditors often look at this and even for employability. So we kind of have that type of conversation and dialogue, and I don't want to make this be something different than what it is, but I mean, you could turn on the news in any day of the week and see how adults are still struggling, how to navigate this thing with technology and social media. So, you know, if I'm seeing it at the collegiate level very frequently, it just makes sense that maybe we need to revisit this a little earlier in the game so we could be proactive. Thank you for that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Slosberg. Yes, thank you. Thank you for being here for your testimony. I had two questions. The first is, did you submit written testimony to us? Yes, I did. This okay. Morning. I just don't, we've, I, there's a lot of paper up here, so unfortunately I don't have it in front of me. No would you, um, would you see this task force as um, part of its focus also dealing with issues of, uh, for lack of a better word, screen addiction? Absolutely. <clears throat> so some, a portion of what often gets overlooked is the the, the subconscious component to this. So in some of the work that we do, again, it's not about me, but I'm in a fortunate position that I do work nationally. It's not just here in Connecticut. But the amount of time the kids spend online, watching videos, watching movies, how many times they see sexualized behavior, violent acts, it desensitizes them in such a way that it becomes, eh, not a big deal. So even when they see their peers in person or online, they say, hey, doesn't have nothing to do with me, not my problem. So part of that digital citizenship really speaks to that, to have a le level of uh, humanity, not just in the day-to-day -day personal component, but also when you're online, because we know those ramifications oftentimes go overlooked because we can't see them and touch them, just you know, as opposed to somebody who might be picking on you in the neighborhood. Okay, that's very helpful. I mean, one of the areas that I think I'm also interested in, I don't know if it would be in the purview of this count, this task force or group, however we're gonna come put it together, is the, is the effect though that we see of many, uh, many young people now, especially, uh, I think more, more often boys than girls, sure. um, living, in a, living in a digital world instead of, uh, instead of you know, actually interacting with other people and that suddenly becomes their whole life and their you know, inability. It is like a drug addiction sure. and it's, you know, it's got different consequences but it, it is a very significant, I think, dilemma or disease, quite frankly, I think of, our, of the, this younger generation. Would you see that as something that the, this group could touch on? Absolutely, and that, that's a great perspective. So the, the company we own is called Welcome to Reality, and we cover things specifically what you're related to. So we're in the process of getting the curriculum published, speaking to all those things directly. However, I'm very aware that there are other folks throughout the state that are also doing incredible work. So this is an impersonal sell, but collaboratively, if we could pool our resources and our data together, collectively, I think we would be in a really good place to address a lot of those issues, speci specifically as it relates to um, soft skills, communication skills, engagement, ownership, responsibility. There's a very, very disconnect when folks are using television and technology because there's that vicarious separation that takes place. And this is the first generation that has no framework without social media and Wi-Fi and technology. So it's all very new for them. Very true. Thank you for that comment. I just remember growing up. I mean, I'm fairly old, I guess, but I can remember growing up and my parents, you know, there was a certain amount of television you were allowed to watch and then the TV went off or, or daddy got the TV at that point That's and right. we just weren't, you know, we had to go off and play outside or do something else. Right. Our kids never, ever go anywhere without their phone, right. ever. It's by their bed when they go to bed. It's the first thing they see when they get up in the morning. They have it with them everywhere. In fact, most of us probably do, uh, except our kids see that. Our, you know, it's, it's never on. It's never not on. Uh, it's nonstop. I mean, I can remember when my kids were little and we did turn off the TV week. We never say turn off your phone week. Right. 
can you even measure it? Like, like everybody starts laughing to even think about it. But we used to have an event called Turn Off the TV Week yeah. from PTA. And every night we'd go to the school and we'd play board games. And can you imagine? We'd be, it just it sounds so irrelevant now, doesn't it? Right. But we recognize that. So I think um, this is a very interesting topic. Thank you very much You're for welcome. your testimony. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions for the witness before us? Um, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman. I, I think I saw Representative Candelaria to be followed by Representative Kokoruda. Mr. Chairman, it's just excuse me, but I have a very quick question. I was just curious if um, Senator Slosberg had electricity when she did those board games. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that uh, electricity predated the television. Uh, Representative Candelaria. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just a quick question. Do you know if there's any, any type of, um, I was reading the language on the bill, is there anything currently being taught in the schools to our children currently right now? So that's a great question. So the question was, is there anything specifically taught in schools? So yes and sort of. So we work with some constituents that are outside of Connecticut that have done some phenomenal work across the country. So you might be familiar with them. They're called Media Literacy Now. They actually assisted us with the leg legislative component to get us to get um, B Bill 962 passed last year. But they're achieving a variety of successes throughout the country. And some of it has been mandated that social media education, there's a fundamental, a bona fide evidence-based curricula that's being disseminated trained by the staff, and then there's other situations where schools are having other folks from the outside who have a whole body of knowledge and expertise that are coming in with their skill set to offer a different level of engagement, once again, so it's not um, increasing the load that educators already have, which is already enormous. Thank you for that. Yeah, sure. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Any other questions? If not, Thank you for your time. And Thank I hope, you. I hope you judge this to have been worth your while. It's all right. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Not great, but okay. Anyone else uh, here to testify in SB 949? 